All right, everybody, we have a schnauzer Daisy here. I'm going to clean up, and my husband is going to video while we do this so that he can get into some close shots of what we're doing here and um, be able to follow along with the camera so you guys can see. So we can use this as a learning video. We're going to do two schnauzers. Um, both of them are kept, kept in uh, a very short cut. Uh, the mustache, though, looks like it's matted. It's not as bad. I can get this out. This is mostly just kind of wet. She was drinking in the water and everything. And we keep the uh, eyebrows a little bit on the shorter side um, so that they can see and everything. We do live out in the country with them, um, or they do. And so they pick up a lot of stuff in their coat. So... We're going to go ahead and start off with the number 10 on her. And Daisy can be a little squirrely with grooming. We've been doing her since puppy. And uh, so I just show you the um, So we go a little slow on her. Um, I am her only groomer. But schnauzers, we all know, can be a little bit on the temperamental side. Um, she's not nasty. She just moves a lot. And one of my favorite breeds is doing a schnauzer. So we're doing a 10. She's used to, against the grain, cleaning the face, neck, and by the eyes on the underside. And because we live in the country, I clean out the bottom eye from corner to corner. But I don't take any off the actual face on her. They kind of like her with the, because she's not as chunky as the other one. Chunky's uh, the other one has always been chunky since the yeah, puppy. She's always been a tank puppy. And so we'll clean out the ears before we do the face. Or before we do the bath. And that will take and uh, absorb any or block from being into the deep into the air, the moisture from the back. Make sure you clean that up really good. So as you guys notice, we use the chokes. She can actually relax and she wouldn't be um, too tight, but we use the metal chokes because I over the years have learned that One if dogs are really really being persistent on wanting to be off the table they can and will chew through your noose or Two they break it three they wear down really easy and so I use a really good quality choke, you guys. Don't use anything that's going to rust. Because you do put your wet dogs up here. Or at least we do. I dry my, we dry our dogs on the table. So when we do the ears, we go with the grain. Now if they were being shown, it's against the grain. As a pet, I go with it on the ears. So that there isn't any skin irritation. I don't get extra vet bills or anything because it's something that I've caused. Because as a groomer, if I've caused it, I'm responsible to ensure it's taken care of. Because it's just how I am. Now, like I said, we'll clean the ears out so you can see that there's still a lot of hair that's on the inside of the ears. But I try to get 
as much of any hair that's actually on the outside of the ear trim short. Come on, you can stand up here. Thank you. Uh, don't know how many of you guys out there notice, but schnauzers could either be lazy or they could be very vicious on the table. Um, I have a few that are very squirmy. She's usually squirmy. And she's not being that today. I've had a luck run with uh, my clients when I came back. Um, I was out sick for a while. And I'm just returning back to my clients. And I have a running luck of them actually behaving. Always remember to check your blades. Don't use a hot blade on a dog. It's not safe. That's where your clipper burns come from. You could also get them from skin irritations, clipping too close. Um, dog has a seborrhea or skin condition. So I hold all of this forward so I can see the face. I'm not wanting to deal with this yet. So, and what I want is the face. Pull this up because we just went corner to corner. We're still going to do the head. That'll come down just the same. And yes, I know a lot of times schnauzers usually go against the grain on majority. Um, these guys here will be doing a number seven up against the grain. They like them short on and with a short pattern because they are, like I said, in the country. And they get a lot of yard debris in their coat. And that's what that is. That you see from the grasses. Am I worried about um, going a little farther uh, with green with the number 10? On the neck, no, because when I do the number seven, it's going to be equivalent to a number ten. Just a little bit cleaner cut. Come around the brow, and I'll cut that out for you. I'll show you that here. Come up. Just, just along the line of where the brow line is, but you want to stop, come around. When you let that up, you're going to have a brow. It's less work for the dog. You just take, clean it up. Keep your equipment sharp and clean, maintain. Clippers any louder than this, have your blades checked, have your clippers checked. Most of the time it's levers or imbalanced blades. Drop your blade, have it checked. You could make it imbalanced and knock him. And you don't want you don't want the extra noise, the extra chatter, and you don't want the chance of nicking your dog. And if your blades aren't right, you're going to nick your dog. If blades aren't sharpened, you're going to nick your dog. Make sure they're sharpened. Mm. 
And I get around the edges. I use my finger to pull the hair over the, the clipper blade. It actually helps get that edge a little bit cleaner. Um, I've noticed it's made it to where I have less edging to do when I've done the dog. When I'm done. Be very careful if you use your blade on the edges. Don't nick the air. You nick the air, they bleed forever. You will have blood everywhere. Where are you going, Daisy? Huh? I don't plan on nicking your ear, and I know you're hearing me talking about nicking ears, right? You know I won't nick your ear. Clean up behind them, because we're going to switch blades now. Or we'll come back to it, number 10, when we go to do the sanitary cut. But we're going to bring the cut to the back of the dog now. So we could be done with the front. And then we'll clean out the feet from that. Number seven, FC. Finishing clothes too. So I kind of start in a full loop. A full swoop. You come down here. The half of the dog starts here. You want you want the skirting of the outline to come up and then down. You want it actually to come in an angle on the dog from the top of the inside hip to the elbow is where you want this. Um, I didn't do the last cut on this, like I said, I was out. I do not discriminate other girls, so I will not tell anybody who did. But it wasn't me. So basically, you want to clean out the gray, leave the white. That's where your feathering is. You come down here to the hop. Now mind you, breed specific rimming is what I've done for a long time. And in the show ring, when the dogs retire and the breeders want to keep the dogs looking sharp with little maintenance, this is how they do it. They keep the coat shorter. So when you come down this way, you come down and you aim for the elbow. So you see how my cut, here's the elbow. Aim for that elbow, come down to it. Elbows right here. So this is done because they want a shortened schnauzer cut. And in order for the featherings to show in a shortened schnauzer, you need to have the back pretty short, and you got to bring things down. If you don't, it kind of makes them look cockery. So right here, to the point, down to the elbow. And that's actually the proper angle to have the schnauzer. You don't do that in a cocker spaniel, and of course, cockers and schnauzers are different, so you don't want your schnauzer in a cocker skirt. 
And that's the difference in it between a hawker skirt and a schnauzer skirt. Is hawker skirt goes straight across, schnauzers don't. They go at an angle. They had a lot of customers come back. Grimmer didn't know what they were doing. And I've seen hawker cut schnauzers. Mm, they're right. Grimmer didn't know what they were doing. So those of you that are watching the video or experienced groomers, you just want to pick up tips and tricks, go for it. This is what this is about. It's a teaching video so that you guys can see how I do it to be able to define a pet quality schnauzer cut so that they still look their best. This will get shaved in the tan. I'm just trying to get in the extra longs. I don't like her rear, so I try to get what I can a little bit here and there. Nuh -uh. So this leg here is where Daisy will at times get stupid. She's been to the vet and everything else, but she's just really sensitive on this side. Nothing wrong with her. Blood work's been done, x-rays, everything. There's nothing there. So she's just sensitive on this side and we just have to accept it. Sometimes my husband has to help hold when it comes to this side because she thinks I'm killing her. But I'm not. She knows I'm not. So again, hawk. Save the inside, leave the featherings on the outside, come up to the hip. Right there, Daisy. Kind of squirrely a little bit. Okay? And then we're going to go from the hip down to the elbow. So all of this is left. This is gone. Elbow. Okay. Now. Elbow up. Most of your pets are going to want their schnauzers this way because there's just a lot of coat. And these dogs get done every six weeks. So this is six weeks of growth. And they've been getting done every six weeks, ever since they were a puppy. So as you can see, she's not straight across. There's no straight across on this. It goes in an angle. Comes from the hip down at an angle to the elbow. Clean it up. And in the front, because she is a shortened schnauzer cut, in the front, we will take this part in here. And the reason why is because when she lays down, she's going to get all mad at me and everything. It's okay, Daisy. She's stiffening up in me. It's okay. And that's, that's a schnauzer thing. They stiffen up. Okay. So here's the corner where we're going to take. Take a little bit more of that fuzz out of there. And come up. And clean out the neck. I'm going to come over here. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to come up from the elbow, come up, and I'm going to clean that up in here. 
Now I have my chest pattern started. There's the breastbone here, it's where it stops. You don't wanna go below the breastbone. So from here, we're gonna go up. <coughs> I keep talking, I keep talking. So this all gets left out. And that's how we set a cocker or a schnauzer pattern. Turn it up. Turn up the neck. Okay, Daisy, you gotta quit. You just gotta quit. Store and buy one today. One that you click here and then you just put blurring on it. Now, like I said, the seven, even though I cut the tan a little bit on the neck behind the ears and that, I'm still getting hair up off of it because the seven against the grain. It's just about the same length. So if there was any longer hair on there from going with the grain on the tan, I could do it with the seven going against the grain, clean it up. And it smooths it out. It really does. Seven F C. Yeah, a lot of people don't confuse my seven F C with the seven. I mean, yeah, it's the same length as the seven, but the blade is different. Blade's still close. There's no skip blade there. And you can still kind of softness. Don't feel like you're skinned. Even though he's short. Even though she's short short. Okay, Daisy. I'm gonna have to put his arm down just a little bit so that you're a little more comfortable. Because we really do stand there. Alright, so now we're gonna do and number 10 on your tum tum and the rear end area. Sometimes this is where Daisy can be the most sensitive, the most feisty. So we'll see. Sometimes she is, sometimes she isn't. So first off, clean out the hiney area. Now remember, they're short butt. So, uh-uh, Daisy, don't you dare. She's always been promiscuous about hiney, hind leg, this leg in particular is more susceptible of her turning and getting me so much than, more so than even doing the hanging area. Just don't mind me picking up this leg. That's okay. So here we do the number 10 underside. Clean all of this out. And we try to do this As swiftly, quickly, easily, gently as possible. Go down to the 
You want to know how far you go down with the 10 blade, go down to the hawk joint on the inside, shave all that out. No. No. Behave. You behave. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. You behave. You know better. Be a good girl, Daisy. Be a good girl. You be a good girl. You be a good girl. You're okay. You're okay. So I'm gonna kind of hold her head. I'm gonna come underneath here on this side. I do my best not to pick this leg up if I can avoid it. Because she will get promiscuous. Just do your best. That's all your clients are asking for is for you to do your best. If you're doing nasty dogs, they know what their dog is like. Not my Daisy. So if your blades are getting too hot too quick on you, chances are your blades are probably dull. Or if you're running Oster's A5, mm -hmm. stay up there. If you're running Oster A5, Chances are um, your vents are dirty. Clean your vents. Clean your, there, there's little vents on the side, on the outside. Don't rush your dogs. clip get the feet cleaned out after we get her brushed out a little bit we try to give them breaks of uh, different things that we're doing so it's not something that's gonna annoy them too much um she's okay with brushes i have schnauzers that are not okay with brushes Mama's gonna come home and find a different doggy. So as you can tell, I won't pick him, pick her up and rake her down this way. And that is because there's no reason for that. 
Um, they get brushed forward anyways. I use my fingers. I'd rather brush into my hand than brush into the dog's skin. So there's my reason. So see, I'm brushing. That's going to be my ability to give that mat support so I can brush it out rather than the dog's skin so that the dog does not get brush or brush burn. I'm going to make sure the comb can go through. The comb will allow to touch the skin. Brush I won't. And as you can tell, it didn't make any difference. She had knots. She has nasty, just like any other schnauzer. But there's no reason why the brush should have to touch the skin. So all of this will get shaved down once you get the bath. We'll do a number four on it. I don't feel any knots or anything in it. I'm not after brushing it or combing it out completely. Uh-uh, stop. I am out after the dog feeling her body getting brushed. Because it's, it's really short, so there's not going to be any knots or anything. But even though it's short, your dog should always know that they're going to get brushed or combed, regardless of how short the coat is. Especially if you have a dog that has a problem with being brushed or combed. Daisy, why do you keep moving? Huh? So to make sure, you know, dogs can get stuff stuck in their coat. I'm going to hold her head because she'll turn at me for this leg. Remember, I told you this leg she has issues with. Nothing wrong with her leg. She just has issues with it. And it's called, don't pick it up, don't touch it. Her leg. She doesn't care about the other legs. You can do whatever you want with the other legs. See, I can pick this one up. Ah, ah, but I have to. So sometimes this behavior is what gets dogs taken away or kicked out of grooming shop. Typical schnauzer behavior, can't take it. No. No. No, 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 no. You bite the comb, you want to bite the comb. I didn't think you want to bite the comb, you want to bite the brush. I will let a dog bite the brush. I will let the dog bite the comb. I will not let the dog bite me. Um, I do have a rule. First bite's free, after that, four's on. And you're going to get done. I have only been bit, bit a very few times. Okay. We're going to go ahead and make this a two-part video. One part for roughing and roughing her in, getting her ready for her bath, which she is now. Second part will be her after she's dried, because the blower is pretty loud. It's hard to talk over. So it'll be after she's dry and for her finish up. So we will cut this off now and we'll see you guys in a bit.